Hello, I'm Jonathan Agnew. Welcome along to Classic View from the Boundary from Test Match Special. Well, the 2009 Ashes Test Match at Cardiff is just one of those games that just stays in the memory forever. Who can forget Jimmy Anderson and Monty Panesar blocking England to that memorable draw in front of a jubilant crowd? Well, 24 hours before the tailenders were doing their thing, we were joined by a Welsh entertainment legend. Max Boyce has sold over two million records in a career that spanned four decades, regularly featuring alongside his great sporting love, which is Welsh rugby. Of course, it was a different sport for Max to enjoy at Sapphire Gardens in 2009, as he joined me for a memorable chat, I love this one, at the start of that thrilling Ashes series. I began by asking who, as a proud Welshman, he was supporting in the game. England. <laughs> no, you've got. You hate to. having to say that. No, no, it's, it is unusual, I must say. But uh, no, you've got to. I mean, I wouldn't have been great if Simon Jones yes. and, and maybe Crofty had been playing as well. That would have uh, been. Yes, well, that would have been very special. Crofty, but I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> that would have been special. No, I mean, it, it, people forget it's England and Wales cricket. It's England and Wales cricket board, and we deserve a test, I think. And uh, we've shown the world, we've shown certainly England and Australia, but we can't stage it. I mean, Cardiff in the last what five, six years has staged you know, FA Cup final. Rugby League finals, uh, you know, three Grand Slams. We got the Ryder Cup come in, yeah. the Ashes. I mean, it's 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 who would have who would have believed it? And Cardiff has shown that we can do it. And I think a lot of people have changed their minds about seeing this Test match in Cardiff. Yeah. What what, what has happened though to, to this area? Why why this? I mean, we've always loved rugby, obviously, and of course Glamorgan have, have been reasonably successful at, at, at cricket over, over the years, the, the one county, of course, first-class county was. What, but, but what has happened to producers? It's, it's the stadium, really. It is absolutely magnificent. It's, 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 it's like rugby in a round. It's, like, it's just a theatre, and of course the, the legend of the, of the singing of the Cardiff as well. But when, that, when that roof is closed at Cardiff, it is something to, to behold. And, and it was just recently voted in New Zealand the greatest rugby ground in the world. Really? Uh, and it is phenomenal. And uh, In recent years we've had two Grand Slams, so it's, it's, but the, it's the actual place itself. It's, um, it's a legendary place, an atmospheric place, and uh, there is nowhere quite like uh, the Millennium. I never thought it would surpass the old Cardiff. Farms Park, but it has. It's a, it's a magnificent place, yeah. and and it's becoming a fortress for Welsh rugby. I was, was going to ask you about that because I, I was lucky. I went to the Cardiff Farms Park a couple of times. I mean, the atmosphere there was absolutely unbelievable before those rugby games. So, so you were a little bit torn, were you, when they talked about this you know, lovely new gleaming thing that we can see just down, uh, just down the road? Absolutely, yeah. everybody was, and I was. I was one. I was an old, being an old romantic, an old traditionalist. I thought yeah. that we maybe should move because something is lost, invariably lost when you move away, because of. Uh, you economics or whatever, financial pressures, something is lost and it had, in certain grounds they have lost, but it actually it, it gained and, and it's, it's um, and this, obviously success has helped, but uh, whether they designed it, they designed it, they didn't try make an athletic stadium as well, so they, it's, it's very intrinsically a rugby stadium that can be used for other sports, but they resist the temptation to make it much bigger, yeah. so, uh, but it's the location that makes it, it's right smack Indeed. in the middle of the capital. In the heart of the city, yeah. 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 And, and, and I think when, when people from the FA kept come down, or the supporters of you know, Liverpool and Man United, the supporters couldn't get over that the location of it because you know Twickenham is a long way out and and, and uh, Murrayfield is a long way out mm. Lanzarote is a long way out um, and Wembley you know yeah, devilishly right. difficult place yeah, to get to from get to it, yeah. but Cardiff you know you're nine yards from a pub <laughs> <laughs> is that all it is yeah <laughs> Well, brilliant place. Well, I have to say, even Blowers is walking back to the hotel from here. Yes, he is, yes. It's beautiful up, up the river as well. But this, this ground, of course, Sapphire Gardens, I saw quite, quite bring myself to call it the other one, <clears throat> but Sapphire Gardens, <laughs> I mean, I played here many, many times, and it was a scruffy old place. You would never have thought, Max, that there was going to be a test match. No, it's, it's, it's remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. And, and you know, I, I've watched these early days with, with great trepidation because uh, I worried, I was dead worried for the pitch. And when I saw the divot coming up in the first, oh, I said, oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. But it's held, and, and I'm so glad, because all whales were waiting with, with bated breath, yes. as, as with the wicket turned too much, and yeah, oh, my, my friend there. <laughs> He's waving. Well, yes, I was going to mention um, your association with Ian Botham, uh, who I think has rumbled you, Max. He's staring <laughs> through the window, inevitably yes. on his mobile phone. <laughs> yes, you know good. him rather well, don't yes, you? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> 
No, he's a great, a great, great friend. Um, he's dangerous company. He's dangerous company, yeah. Uh, and I, I had the misfortune to spend three years in pantomime with Ian, and uh, it's the most tired I've ever been in my whole <laughs> life. <laughs> It, it was Jack and the Beanstalk, was it? Jack was, and the Beanstalk, There was yeah. some incredulity, I have to be honest with you, on on the cricket circuit when it was announced that Ian Botham yeah. was going to go into pantomime. And, and, it, and it was with you, wasn't it? It, yeah, was, it was you and yeah. him together. Yeah. Jack and, and the Beanstalk. It, yeah, and and I, I resisted. The, and I, know, I knew that the press would, would crucify him. So uh, I made sure that he... Because I wrote it and, uh, and directed it. And I made sure that... He, no, there was no mention of cricket. I didn't no. give him a silly bat in his hand and knocking balls into the audience. He just came on as a real king and 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 if, if the first he, he was by the end you know he was he was really really good the first yeah. the first reveal winner the Alhambra theatre in Bradford and it said the princess was wonderful a wonderful voice and the dame was was uh, um, wonderfully sinister and Max Boyce excelled in the role of Jack and it said about Ian and the only thing more wooden than the beanstalk <laughs> was Ian Bottom <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we stuck it up. We tried to hide it from him. We stuck it up on the dressing room wall. <laughs> and then he got picked. He got picked for England out of the blue to go to Australia and New Zealand. And he was he was he was supposed to be playing. And then somebody got injured. That's right. And they picked him out of the blue. Yes. And he was in pantomime with me playing the king in Bournemouth. And the headlines because he was contracted to me. And the headlines in the Bournemouth trumpet said. King or country, because <laughs> he was playing the king. And I had to release him from the contract from Jack the Beast to play for England. <laughs> <laughs> All I remember at the time, Max, was that there's some discussion about well, there's actually a, a, a beanstalk that he was growing at the back, but it definitely wasn't really a million beanstalk. Was it? He was he was a terrible, terrible person. The last scene was was Jack Jack fighting the giant, and he had been thrown the king and the princess, and and the, the, they'd been thrown in this jail behind behind where I was fighting the giant in this, like, the flats, the back flats of the thing. And, and they were in there for about 10 minutes when this fight was gone. And of course, he was bored stiff in this, in this jail. Yes. So the, I mean, lethal in there. Yeah, he, but he, he built a bar behind the flats of the stage. And he, when I was fighting the giant, he was going to go, <laughs> <laughs> champagne cocks and, and beer being pulled. And that was me to fight the giant. He was hopeless, hopeless. I'll never forgive him. And how long did this ordeal last? I mean, weeks. Ninety-four shows. Ninety-four. Yeah. Good grief! I, I killed like well, I was killing two giants a day <laughs> for two and a half months, and he was he was in the jail, in Chateaubriand. Oh, but, but but I mean, <laughs> but you you he signed He's a terrible, him. terrible man. Yes. Yes, but he's got amazing stamina because it wouldn't oh, have bothered him, would it? But the great story of it. This is Yates, the story. <laughs> he's not here. Don't look around. He's not coming we're in, in. Don't worry. We are guests. We are guests out in the Masters in Augusta of Ian Woosnam, big, big Welshman, great golfer, and a good friend of mine. So he had tickets now for Ian, for Beefy and myself and this guy called Stan Thomas, Stan the Pies. So, but just before... I've heard about Stan the Pies, Stan the Pies before. Pies. How Sir, Sir Stanley Thomas, no? Right. And yes. a big mate of Beefy, big mate of mine. Anyway, so was he got his tickets. But a couple of days before the master started, a relative, a close relative of Ian Wisdom's wife died. So we actually had now the family tickets and the, and the immediate family could actually go into the clubhouse, right in the clubhouse where Magnolia Drive sat next to Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods. It was incredible. But we had these, these credit tickets, right, with Woozy's family on. So we, we down Magnolia Drive, we got to this, and, and this big, big sheriff said, our name, sir, on check, your name, sir. And I, I said, uh, Glenrith. <laughs> which is Glenrith Woodsland, which is Ian Woodsland's wife. That, that's a strange name, sir. Yes, it says it's Celtic. It says it's Celtic. <laughs> and then, and then, Stan, then Stan, Stan Thomas comes. Name, sir, uh, Amy. <laughs> Amy, sir. That's another girl. Yes, Amy. We wanted a girl. A, a, Amy was them. Of course, beef is waiting. He comes at last in, and this big shadow says, "Name, sir, Rebecca." <laughs> Hi, Beefy, Rebecca. And we shout him, come on, Becky, do hurry, do hurry. <laughs> and he's great. And he's, well, I can't say what he said. I can't, but, don't, but the no, sheriff said, said, that's not very ladylike, sir. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, both of them. <laughs> I can't see. You've cleared him out of his box. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no, no that's, that's lovely. But that, that, you have to be admired, Max, for, for, for spending time with no, him. Have, have you walked with him? You've done, you've done his charity yeah, walk? Yeah, I've done all the walks with him, yes. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, the... Uh, the biggest thing he's ever done is, you know, if it hadn't been for 
Ian Botham, uh, we wouldn't have a children's hospital in Wales. And I know he's, uh, he's got a great cricketing legacy, but in Wales, his greatest legacy is the money he raised for our children's hospital. Is that right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is remarkable. And he, and he goes to the pace on those things, too, doesn't he? Did he his runs, I, I, I did the first one, it was from Gloucester to Bristol Airport, and they actually wheeled me, in, wheeled me into Bristol Airport on a um, Graveney. Right, yes. Uh, wheeled me in on the bringing airport trolley, and I was 10 days, for 10 days, I was on crutches after that first walk. <laughs> and we did it on Beaujolais Nouveau Day of all days, which, oh, no. which didn't help. But uh, what? He, yeah, he runs. He doesn't walk. He runs. I was running alongside him. I, it was. Yeah, I was. I was. He nearly killed me. Uh -huh. so. What is it about music in this part of the world, Max? I mean, we've had. Well, I, I really enjoyed the opening ceremony here. All this. Wonder, I mean, what, what is it about Wales? Well, and, so Wales and singing. Why are you all such, such happy people? Well, we're not all happy, but I mean, it's it's, it's part but, of. But it's it's singing part go with it's our happy, culture. Yeah. So yeah, of course it is. But it's part of our culture, part of our heritage, and and uh, it's passed on from generation to generation. We take great faith in our our singing and our poetry. And it's it's hand, why it hasn't why why it is so I don't know but it's, I'm glad that it does it yeah. was part of the opening ceremony here yeah and, and still now I mean even youngsters coming up they 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 yes. be singing yeah. at a Welsh, you know, Welsh choir just won the the, the, the big talent competition uh, the, the last choir standing and the two finalists was all from Britain I think some like four. 400 choirs, yeah. and the two choirs in the final were two Welsh choirs, and uh, the South Wales choir won the final of all the choirs in Britain. Yeah. So it's still still very strong. I mean, there's, there's nothing more more passionate than, than being at the Cardiff Arms Park and oh. and, and, and listening to a, a rugby crowd. No, I mean, you, you, you sang. You, you, you I sang. I had, I had the privilege of singing at the opening ceremony of the World Cup, and then I sang it before and after the Grand Slam game against Ireland and that was something I'll never forget because I didn't know I was going to sing, they just got me back on at the end of the game, we just won the first Grand Slam for 27 years and to sing and come around the uh, oh. bread of heaven yes. and an old Welsh hymn called Carol Lan, to sing that and the, all the Irish lads stayed and we got like 75,000 people and singing one song I'd written myself to hear that I mean nobody went home, you know people, people didn't want, they wanted to save that I mean, forever, people People are, people, some people are still there now. They, they, sent, they sent out for powdered milk and blankets so they, they live the moment forever. And I think this will be the similar occasion here at Sway Yeah, I hope so. I know, that, I mean, you're still writing, aren't you? And, and you, you've, you've sat down um, to, to, to write, I uh, sort of an ode. Is it well, about it, this occasion? It's, it's to mark the occasion of the first um, test. Uh, here in Wales. I, I thought it needed something and I, I researched the, the history of the Ashes and now the first the first one is at, uh, at the Oval down Lambeth's leafy ways and people say oh it'll be over in two days in Cardiff. It was the first test was over in two days so I've run a little... With a very bad result. Yes I've run a little parallel and I call it the richest test. Way back in 1882 down Lambeth's leafy ways when Hornbury's feated English side were beaten in two days, a venting spleen in the sporting time wrote scornful of the failure of a cremated body's ashes will be taken to Australia. Then Captain Ivo Blythe proud stood and took a lordly stand and vowed the ashes would return to this green and pleasant land. But that summer found him wanting and still mournful of his loss, some ashes with respect bequeathed beneath the Southern Cross. The outer casing of a ball, a broken stump or bale, the splintered hopes of English dreams or an ageing mother's veil. The questions without answer, and may we never learn the secret of the ashes in that terracotta urn. And now a hundred years have passed, and I'm weary of the dross that's written in some papers about English cricket's loss. The first test on a turning pitch, it'll be over in two days, just like it was in 82, down Lambeth's leafy ways. So if England win at Cardiff, we'll cremate the stumps and bales, and the richest dust in England will forever be in Wales. <laughs> yes. Well, Max, that's fantastic. <laughs> Fairly published. But no, it, I haven't. Set, I it to, set it to music. Set it to I song. could do it. Set it to a meter that can uh, can sing it. But it would be nice. It would be great if um, if we did win here, and I could maybe maybe put the last two lines on a plaque. It it would be lovely, and, and maybe oh, yeah. and give it to the museum here in Savoy Gardens. And uh, yeah, so if, if England win at Cardiff, we'll cremate the stumps and bales, and the richest dust in England will forever be in Wales. <laughs> No, lovely. And it's, I mean, sport does it, doesn't it? Sport, sport brings out passion to people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, people 
uh, this have a remarkable effect on Welsh cricket, and that, that can only be good. And I think people will be go will go away from here um, glad. Uh, glad that, that they gave us this occasion to show to show ourselves to the world, as it were. Yeah. Will it bring us all closer together? Absolutely. You think so? For Welsh people, shouting for England, that's a one-off. And yeah. Long and beginning. We'll put our, our tribalism away for five days. <laughs> but is it difficult? I, no, I, no. I mean, I don't know. I, I've, I've come here to play, and, and you come and play Glamorgan, and you are playing against Wales. No, no doubt about it. And it was it's, very patriotic. Absolutely. And so it is actually quite a big thing. I mean, people who haven't been across over here perhaps don't quite understand the fact that actually you, know, you are a proud separate country and it is possibly I don't know you explain it but quite a difficult position to be or an unusual place to find yourself actually here cheering on Freddie Flintoff and, and oh, he's, a, he's a huge you know he's a huge favorite on you and no I think the the Cardiff crowd and the Welsh cricket crowd because you know the South Wales leagues are very powerful cricket leagues and and they are they are so thrilled that the Ashes have come here, that uh, England are playing a test year. I'm so thrilled, and it's, it's been infectious. Walking around the ground, and uh, it was a lovely moment when I, when I got into the ground today. Um, I sat down, and this chap in front of me said, uh, Oh, he said, don't sit by there. I said, I said, why? He said, he said, the sky cameras will be on you, and I'm, not, I'm supposed to be in work. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to move. I had to move. <laughs> <laughs> Just to touch, I mean, you, you, let me talk about cricket and everything else. But touch on, on, on what you, how you started. Uh, I was quite fascinated by it, really, because it, it's quite an unorthodox route to doing what you, you have spent your 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 life doing, wasn't it? I mean, I, I was reading somewhere that actually someone put a guitar on your hand and you, yeah, you could, I, could I, play I started it and... off. I, I started um, by the folk clubs, as in fact Jasper Carrot did and Billy Connolly and Mike Harding, and 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 we became, over a period of time, we became storytellers and and with the songs occasion a song along the way and um, I'd always loved poetry and I always loved folk music but gradually the comedy took over and I, I wrote about any occasion like I wrote uh, the richest test yes. I wrote whatever was happening uh, in in and at the time it was there was a big movement you know folk folks on moving at the time and and people singing of Vietnam and I couldn't sing with any credence you know of Vietnam so I wrote what I knew about I wrote about the pits closing and 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 it just struck a chord and it, and it, you know, it just, uh, it, you know, had five gold albums in like seven years. It was, a, and it, but, yeah. but completely by accident. I never, I never ever, ever intended to become an entertainer at all. I was, I was you know, I, I did a, you know, I did a, a mining, coal mining apprenticeship um, for like seven years, and I worked on the ground for ten years. But, I never. Dad died in the mine. Right? My, my father was killed in the ground uh, a month before I was born. He was, he was killed in August the 27th, and I was born. On September the 27th. So. And you still went down the pit. Well, there was no other work. You know, it was the last place in the world my mother wanted to go. And I, and 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 I, I she was asked me, "Are you going today?" No, no, I'm not, not, not today. You know, and I, but I was on the ground. But it gave me. I look back. You know, cherished memories of those times working at the coal face because it, it it enabled me to write songs of first-hand experience rather than you can only write of your own you can only, you can only write well of personal experience and those songs the, my best songs are written like Ron the Grey, Dear With Sad, Close the Call House Door and the Minor Strike song they are my finest work I know I'm better known for the comedy but my finest work of personal experience working in working on the ground and it's something I'll always cherish and, and I'd, I'd had the opportunity to make those to meet and work with those old coal miners who were absolute characters and salt of the earth yeah. What was it like down there? What was it like going going to work? It was down? terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. We worked in in, in some places. It, it, it uh, worked in sometimes two foot six, you know, of height, and okay. that was pretty terrifying. And you couldn't you couldn't see you know a lamp in front of you was, and this the, and then the six feet seam was so dusty you couldn't see anything. I mean, you wouldn't be allowed today. The conditions you wouldn't be allowed to work. Talk about health and safety today, you know, <laughs> about the rubber bottoms of ladders. <laughs> Ridiculous, they were terrible places, but wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience, and, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. And, and the community around it, presumably, was all all about the pit. Totally, yeah. the, the, the whole workforce was the village, because there was there was the odd maybe teacher and preacher, but everywhere, whether they were you know they were craftsmen or blacksmiths, but whole villages worked in in, in the local pit, you know, and to see, and, and that's gone. It's, it's it's fractured now. The whole the whole workforce is fractured. But those communities, with their inherent warmth and passion, and, and sadness and humour, they were the seams that I could write about. And yeah. uh, 
remarkable place. It's much, much changed now, but uh, the tradition still dies hard. Yeah. So off you went onto the club circuit. I mean, you, so you have the whole evening to yourself, or you? Be, no, be not then. I was out. Of, no, no, I mean, I, you know, difficult times to start with, um, and then I gradually just did the work in the club scene, and then gradually, then I got, I got better known. I could do the, 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 the theatres and, and the records I brought out there, and then I had television series, and then of course it, it just went on and on. Yes. And, I'm and fascinated by how it started because. It, it, 1973, opportunity knocks, and it didn't go terribly well. No, I, 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 because you see, three minutes. I, I, I'd still find it difficult today to do something in three minutes because I'm, 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 you know, I'm a lingy long storyteller, so yes. I'm not sort of don't tell one sort of one line joke. So very difficult. So literally, stop, watch three minutes, and that's all you. That's all yeah. You have. So I found yeah. that very difficult. Huey Green and everything. Yeah, else. did all that, and then. Um, and what happened? I came second. Okay, it wasn't Came second, of Bo Bobby Crush. Oh, no. with, with, flilly, no. with frilly shirts, yeah. Bobby Crush. He just play a song on a piano, easy in three minutes. What did he? Oh, good. I can't, oh, really, I can't can. remember. But, it, but, but comedy in three minutes is very difficult. Well, so I think I've, to be beaten by Bobby Crush is nothing to be ashamed of. No, it's Crash. not. It's not. I broke my heart at the time. I because we were so fiercely sort of competitive in Wales mm. and uh, proud. Oh, I felt I'd left the nation down, you know. And uh, so it took a, it took a while to to recover from that. And uh, and, and I was uh, and a guy called Roy, Royster Mayer was the director, and he'd heard that it did it, you know, and and uh, and within three years of doing it, I was the subject of This Is Your Life, and he was the same director, you yeah. know, and it was a remarkable, remarkable turnaround. Yeah. But you have to go through those troughs and th those sad times, and you do. I know it's you know, you know, it's often said, but you are stronger. You become you come out of failure much stronger. Yes, uh, well, that's that's a good point. I mean, it, it is often better to have to struggle first. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I wasn't ready either. I wasn't ready for television. I mean, oh no, no way. No. You know, I, I was I was still working at the time. I was still working in the ground. You know, and suddenly, so um, so these people that are on the talent shows, I I got utmost admiration of the way they handle the pressures with no experience whatsoever. Do you, do, do, you, do you sit and watch X Factor and these I things? I do. Yeah. You do. I mean, it's, it's I, almost like a modern day opportunity not. It is, it? and yeah. I'm fascinated now how, how how well they do. But again, you know, it's it's uh, where they go from there. The the ones that come second and third, they just they just you know cast aside and and. They have a, a year in the sun at most. Yeah, I, I was again just reading up a little bit, and your the, 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 the record label came down to here. Is that right? They, they booked a, a a rugby club somewhere for your for your concert. No one no one turned well, up. No, no one paid 50p a ticket. So they had to run in free. Yeah, no one well, no one had heard of me. I I, I made the decision that to go to someone that that I'd never sang before, so the songs would be fresh. So I went to a similar village of my own, but of course no one heard of me, couldn't sell a ticket. So we had to get, we had to go to, around the pubs and, and ask people to come and see this lad from. Dragged them out. And we dragged them out, yeah. But because it was fresh, it really worked. And, and what, what sells that album? It sold like a, nearly a million albums, you know, which is unheard of in those days. And what, it, and what makes it is is the audience, the freshness of the audience hearing those songs for the first time. And of course those songs, that audience. We'll always be hearing the songs for the first yeah. time, and, and the magic of the album is the audience, because yeah. hearing those songs for the first time. You're still singing them now? One or two of them, yeah. One or two <laughs> that wasn't the cue, Max. I promise you, no, 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 I no, promise no, you everybody, no, don't no, panic. No, no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't sing before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, I mean, an elephant polo I was reading. Yeah, yeah. Right. But can we, my, 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 can, can, before we go to that, my, my abiding me cricket memory was, um, and for me to come on this program, a legendary program, and I remember when I was on it last, like in 1991, the dear old Johnners, I was so wrapped up in the ball-to-ball -ball comedy, I felt I wouldn't miss a ball. And I even found, because I was on tour at the time, and I devised a route map, a route map of Britain, where you couldn't miss a ball without going through a tunnel. Ah. <laughs> so I built, I built a tunnel network of Britain where I wouldn't miss a ball on TMS. So Did if you? anyone wants a map where you can, you can, you can carry a <laughs> listen to this program without going through a tunnel, write to me. <laughs> so Took me nine hours, mine, but still. <laughs> But, but what I was going to say, my greatest moment cricket came was uh, we were playing at Burgess, he was a PE teacher down at Monmouth Public School, not far from here, and, uh, and he'd had this game against Somerset, and, uh, and they're all playing, um, uh, Denning, Brian Rose, oh, yeah. Joel Garner, Botham, Victor Viv Richards. Play? Victor play? Yes, he played, Victor he? played, and, and I, 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 I used to open the bowling. Anyway, I got... 
Denning out sadly died yeah. three years ago and got him out and woke him into bat. I V A H S. <laughs> I'll be the greatest striker of the ball I've ever seen. And this man, for me, the privilege of bowling this great man, I V A H S. And they, they kept me out the attack initially. Very wise. And, 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 and I, but I looked around the ground and I thought, these people have come to see Viv, not me. So I thought, I'll just give him one to get off the mark. <laughs> well, they never did find it. <laughs> well, that's not strictly true. They found parts of it. <laughs> But most of it had burnt out on re-entry. <laughs> but the seventh ball of my fourth over, I did him. On my children's life, I got the great man out. And I, as people that keep, as people that keep mementos of this great occasion, you're a I've, I've got that school book now in the house. Phil Bennett caught him in Long Life Boundary. It's there forever. I V A Richards caught Bennett. Bowl boys. <laughs> Three hundred and seventy-eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Max, it's been great having you on. I think they're coming back. They on are, there, so. they are. The, the, uh, the on-field entertainment, but uh, what off-field. Thank you so much oh, for coming it's, in. It's been a pleasure to be part of this well. legendary programme, and uh, I've listened to it ever since I was a, a young boy. And uh, so, uh, Miss Power to Elbow, I never thought I'd hear the programme coming from here in the capital of Wales. Well, I'm not going to go next door and call anybody Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can have a go. We think I go out Saturday, so you get me back for that. Oh, really? oh. <laughs> Max Boyce, everybody, thanks for coming in. Great, Great. fun. Mate, mate. There we go. Great. Great.